Okay, I am back for the third and final time. <laughs> I trust. Okay, so. Oh my gosh, it's just so much that I covered in the last two recordings. Let's see here. Ah, I kind of took some notes. Before I get into these clarifiers, I just want to kind of continue with uh, my story. Okay. So, lastly, I was discussing my eldest son who so many turns this weekend. The son Pisces. Okay. Um, and just the different, you know, um, challenges that I had to face um, and deal with these last couple of years, you know, during my uh, spiritual journey. One of them was, you know, dealing with um, uh, my children because I had to go through a deep purging. And um, that consisted of me purging out every king and every body that was not conducive to my journey, my spiritual journey, period, you know? So that was my whole entire damn family. You know what I'm saying? And on both sides, you know? A lot of them that uh, may not have been directly involved with the portrayal and the slander, you know, and trying to take my life. They they knew about it. And so therefore they were silent. Silence is another form of betrayal, people. Understand something. Alright? And you done added some, you know, karma on your ass just by you being silent knowing of, or even hearing, you know, the gossip and the lies, things being said. And you're not saying nothing. You're just sitting back and taking it in and trying to have one foot in and one foot out. You can't be the one with me, okay? You can't. You either in or you motherfucking out. Ain't no in between. Okay? Period. So these people... And when I say these people, I'm talking about these uh, government officials, family, friends, uh, you know, people that I may have connected with on an intimate um, level. Um, and my children. Yes, so, but they used my children. They used my children to try to take me off my square, okay? Uh, they wanted me to come down to their vibration so that they could devour me and take me out. They thought using my heirs, my children, would get that job done. But I used my divine intelligence, okay? Um, with my eldest son, you know, like I said, I had to banish him. And we've been separate for about, you know, a little over a year now. And uh, I did speak with him about maybe a month ago, over, over a month ago, um, because he was wanting to speak with me and whatever, but however, and give this, um, you know, a uh, fake apology without saying what he apologized for and without really being fully accountable. But you see, because I read energy and I'm going to listen to every motherfucking word you're saying, okay? And I'm going to feel everything that you're saying, how you're saying it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel all that, okay? And I spoke with him. After having this no contact. Um, and I knew he was being sent to me. To set me up. 
I heard and felt this energy, and it was a lot of anxiety. It was like this old this sense of urgency. It's like, what is the sense of urgency coming from? Um, it was unstable. It was fear that I heard. But then a part of him was crying out. I heard that part too. Trying to come out of what he was in. Okay? And then that spirit was taken over. Was taken over him, and then that's when the degrading, you know, was coming in, you know, coming from and the fire of the name calling the word witchery when he didn't get what he wanted when he won. Okay, um, I knew those energy siphoning demons were, was on him, okay. In spirit and in flesh. Let's not get it twisted here. Okay. Around that same time, like within that same week, my daughter wanted to take, uh, wanted me to go to dinner with her in honor of her soul return. And I changed the plans that the day of, intentionally, and her actions was that of anxiety and confusion and fear. You know? Uh -huh. hmm. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. <laughs> and right during that time when I told her that I was numb, she started to panic. I mean panic. She was doing stuff she didn't know she was doing, and I'm just sitting there watching her. And then at that same time, things was going on outside with other people, chaos. So chaotic energy, which for me was like a warning. That was a warning sign. And had not been using my divine intelligence, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have saw none of that, okay? So I'm doing my magic from afar because I won't lose myself, not even for my children. They need to come to me in their nakedness wholeheartedly and with a pure heart, ready to be accountable, honorable, and truthful and in love. Because that's the only way I'm going to listen. Ain't going to be no you blaming me for everything. Ain't going to be none of that. Mm -mm. Now we pat, you surf, okay? No, it's going to be you being accountable. Now I haven't raised you. I don't have any more babies no more, okay? My youngest is 20. My oldest is a 31. I don't have any more big babies. My second son is 25. Okay? So I raised you. I've done my part. Now it's time for y'all to be accountable. Okay? It's, it, it's, it's time for them to be accountable for themselves and their actions. How are you going to do something and say, oh, I did it because it's my mother's fault? What? No. Stop that. That's that's a shame. You need you know. So you see, my 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 sun sign is the most loving and nurturing sign in the zodiac. Which is cancer. <laughs> and my daughter and I are polarity. So her sign is, sun sign is Capricorn. And then my sons, their signs are uh, each other's polarities, okay? My eldest son, his, his sun sign is Pisces. And my other son, his sun sign is a Virgo. So how, you know, how crazy is that, right? So we have plenty to learn from one another and use the other to balance the polarity, to balance, you know, to bring that, you know, the six of fear. We can learn from the other one, because that other one is our polarity, okay? 
my maternal grandmother, who transitioned in around what, 2018, peace be upon her lovely, beautiful soul. Okay, my grandmother was beautiful. Um, she, uh, she was a Capricorn. And uh, she was just so pretty, you know. Um, she told me when I was going through a crisis, when I was pregnant with my daughter, dealing with her father, um, and I had a very close relationship with my grandmother. Um, she, I would go to her, you know, for, you know, things and, you know, problems I may have been going through, and she would give me wisdom. But she told me, because I actually was trying to be made to um, abort my daughter. And, um, and this was after I actually had an abortion with her, um, you know, being pregnant by her father. Before her, I did, we aborted a, a child. And... Um, it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. He wanted it. And because of what we were going through, I agreed to it. Because I'm like, you know what? We don't need to be having a baby with this. With, you know, I don't want. So, but I did tell him, if I got pregnant again, I'm having it. I'm having the baby. And lo and behold, what, nine, ten months later, I got pregnant again with my daughter. And he was talking at abortion, and I told him, no. I shut him down immediately. Immediately, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, you're not talking to me into, hell no. And then I already told you. <laughs> so absolutely not. Okay? So uh, going through that, and then just going through the verbal abuse with him, you know, um, I was going through a lot mentally. So, uh, it wasn't until I talked with my grandmother. And she told me, child, um, she told me a story about her husband's daughter, how she passed away. She, didn't have, she had an abortion like at five months. And, you know, that took her life. But she told me that I was an amazing mother. I was a wonderful mother beautiful mother that I took care of my children very well and to never be ashamed of that don't listen to anyone she said you walk with your head up high and you take your babies and you take care of them and you close that door behind you and you don't listen to nobody when somebody is telling you about how you take care of your baby she said you take care of those babies yes you do okay so yeah and she was correct. I am an amazing mother and woman. Okay? And because now I'm knowing that I am a divine mother, a divine woman, an empress. And I took care of them as a single mother the best way I knew how. I always provided a clean and, excuse me, and safe home for them. I gave them unconditional love and support. Okay? And I like to use the scene, the bear scene in the 2015 movie Revenant with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, and I like to give a visual of that scene of my protective nature when it comes to my children. And that's that common knowledge, which is cancer, by the way. So if you haven't seen that movie, it is a really good movie. I recommend go take a look at it. And that bear scene, uh-huh. That's me in my protective nature when it comes to my babies. All right? So my son knows how powerful his mother is. And... That's a challenge for him because it's forcing him to be accountable and focus on his inner power before he's ready. 
So, he called me weak, an idiot, you know. He said I deserve to be in jail. Well, that was before I had that running in 20, February 2022, okay? Um, another degrading name. But when I spoke to him about a month ago, he called me an idiot, you know, and stupid, and, and all these different thing, names. Um, so his actions and curses, I knew, was only going to curse him. And I knew, I'm like, oh my God, he don't do, he not know what he doing to himself. So I knew it wasn't going to be good for him. If he didn't get his stuff together and change, you know, immediately, ASAP. Because he knew better. When you know better, you gotta do better, right? Mm hmm Yeah. You see these government officials, these family members, and everybody working with them, they wanted to take everything from me. to try to leave me in the Five of Pentacles energy. They wanted to take the little job that I had. They wanted to take the house that I was managing and acquire it through a lawful adverse possession and fixing it up. They wanted to take $28 from me. <laughs> they wanted to take my stones, my crystals. Okay, they wanted to take my car that I paid cash for I was settling in a 2018 lawsuit. Okay, everybody was just like really jealous of me about that damn little car that I had. I mean, damn. I didn't steal it. I got it honorably. And after the car that I had prior, you know, caught fire with me and my daughter in it because of some old negligent mechanic that somebody recommended, my, my supervisor at the time actually recommended this, this shop to me. And yeah, they did some electrical work with my heating system, you know, because I always drove foreign cars. Uh, for the, you know, most part, probably about 95% of my cars, probably about 98% of my cars were foreign. And, uh, you know, I was going through a little, little lawsuit for job discrimination. And, um, I ended up selling, and you know, I was going to use that to buy a house and to get my eldest son a car because he was in school at the time. And so that he can be able to kind of, you know, get around. And if he wanted to travel from Ann Arbor to Detroit, he can do that, you know. But I ended up having to get two cars. So I ended up paying cash for me a car. I got a little uh, a uh, Volkswagen C. You know, and people were just in awe. You know, clean. It was a 2011, had a little over 50,000 miles on it. And people was just in awe over that thing. And um, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to pay a note, okay, on that. And so, I got it registered, you know. I was with the temple at the time, and actually the temple was trying to get me to register it under them. I'm glad I didn't. And I'm sure most of you know why. However, um, after some time, I ended up transferred into a trust and, um, you know, switching the title over to the trust name. And I have a clip, you know, a uh, corporate plate. Um, you know, the, the uh, plate from the state. 
And I remember, you know, as I was traveling, because I don't drive, you know, if I'm traveling privately, I'm not doing any commerce, okay? So um, I'm traveling, and one day, you know, traveling down eight mile, eight mile, at, at sometimes can be hot. And uh, this cop was just like thirsty just to give tickets. I guess he had to meet his quota for that day, desperately. So he swooped up behind me and his ass swooped. I guess he read my license plate, but his ass swooped right back, <laughs> right from behind me. And I'm like, hmm, okay, I wonder what came up on that, you know, on that system. Anywho, after that, I ended up taking the plate off completely. I did an injunction and, you know, um, noticed, you know, certain entities. And after, what, 30 days or so, I ended up taking that, um, you know, commercial plate off. And um, I created my own plate um, from build a sign, I think it is. And I was traveling that way. And, um, you know, with it still, you know, signing it over to the trust and everything. Um, so, yeah. So they, they, they took, and then all the cities in Michigan, you know, when I would travel to the other cities, they didn't bother me. But it was this one time in Detroit, you know, and I would feel their energy. They so you know, I mean, you know, you got your, um, your um, compromised cops everywhere, but Detroit cops, most of them crooked, okay? They're criminals. They have records, criminal records, doing real criminal shit, okay? Traveling. And not possessing a driver's license is not a crime. Traveling and not having car insurance or registration is not a crime. Okay? Come on now. This is res judicata with the Supreme Court. Stop with the foolishness. Is. But however, when they would ride past me or, you know, whatever, I could feel their energy. They were so hateful. I could feel their energy. They were looking at me so hateful, just, just full of hate and jealous and envy. It just don't even make no sense. You know? But the same with my damn family. You know? Good things are happening. And you don't get no, you know, oh, you know, that's good, congratulations. They just look, they just give you, you, you just get that look in silence. And then that's how I know. That's how I knew. Like, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. They wanted to take what else? Yeah, they wanted to make me an example, an example out of me, silence me, do court proceedings in secret so I could not defend myself. They went and reported fraudulent things on the straw mail's consumer report. They created fake IDs in my straw mail to carry out their agenda. You know, they went and searched and used old signatures and all kinds of stuff. And I was informed by spirit that life insurance policies were taken out in, you know, and in, uh, in my name. You know, I'm holding this silver with these silver bonds. So it's about money, honey. They wanted me unalive, gone. Okay? It's ridiculous. And because of my divine purpose here. Yes, I know. I know. They went through great leaps and bounds to sabotage my name, my character. Then they, like I said, they 
using my children to try to say I'm this type of bad mother, all kinds of shit for money. Yes. Some things that I can't go no farther about, but you know, I will one day soon come. Motherfucker's crazy. Just a few weeks ago, you know, while I was out, I had a man following me, walking behind me, and um, I noticed somebody walking behind me, just walking behind me. And then when I noticed him walking behind me, I didn't look back. I just kind of turned my head to the left, and I saw his shadow. And then he kind of slowed down and tried to hide the record behind me. And I said, okay. Because I don't walk without protection on me. So when he realized I saw his retarded ass, he came and, you know, wanted to walk up and pass me and then go speak. I see you. I saw him. I felt your energy. So I'm walking mind in my business because you got one time to make one, one wrong move. And I am going to defend and protect myself. Don't you dare think you're going to put your hands on me and it's just going to be that easy breezy. Absolutely not. You see. Because it's some motherfucking criminal cops out here and the people they working with they want to violate me sexually also because I know they do that as well but not I not here all them things that y'all tried to mislabel me as the things you wanted for me that's not my reality you don't have power to create my reality I only have that power, and I haven't given you the power or consent or the authority to. So take, so sit your ratchet asses down somewhere. This is my life. I'm in control of it. I have the power. So then I cross the street. Still minding my business. And the heck of this nigga come again, now walking towards me, walking past. And he looked like he wanted to say something or leap. I'm watching, I'm reading your energy, bro. I'm ready. Then I get on the little Q line, which is like the little train downtown Detroit. And it's like chaotic on there. You know, a lot of shit going on. I'm like, well, what is this energy? But it was this one little pale skin motherfucker with dark hair and glasses standing. But something for whatever reason, I kept, you know, being drawn to look at that motherfucker. So he ended up getting off the train at the same location as me. He got off before me, so he was walking way ahead of me. This nigga stopped on the corner, went up down the street a little bit. And then I'm walking by, he's standing right there. Then he go and walk behind the building to come through the parking lot to meet me. Then he ended up still being ahead of me. So this nigga slowing down, stopping to let me go ahead of him. Then I turn, so now he walking behind me. And then I turn down one street. This nigga turned down the, the street too. I'm walking slow as hell. This nigga walking even slower so he can, he on the other side of the street so he can stay behind me. What the fuck? The slower I walk, the slower he walk. Nigga, I see you. I'm not only watching with my two eyes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And then, he gets in his parked car and then do some more weird, weird ass shit. Back up and go down this one street take some combs, turn around, some, you know, little combs, street combs. He take it 
and put two in his car and come back to where I was and then put him out on the street and then stood there and then got in the car and then got, drove back where I was. And at this point, I was somewhere where he couldn't see me. So he looking for me. And I'm just watching him. So I had to cloak myself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was all in the same day. And also that same day, I almost got hit by a car. I was downtown Detroit. So downtown Detroit is fucked up. The energy down there is demonic. Dark. Because they do too much shit down there. Okay. They do fucking rituals and spell work down there too. So yeah. Mm hmm So I always call on my protection. True that. True that. Okay. So yeah. And just to say, my daughter was the only one that knew where I was going that day. Mm -hmm. I shared it with her. And the day prior. So, with that being said, mm, I want to send love and peace to my ears. They were tricked and they were bamboozled to turn against their divine mother and not trust me. And I'm the gateway to their abundance. I'm here to be the example for them, to teach them, to lead them, to protect them. Because with my protection is the protection of my ascended masters, okay? My guides, my ancestors that are working for my highest good. I am the Holy Grail, and they protect the Holy Grail. But they were told by these people, by family, by these government entities, to not listen to their mother. They wanted to label me unstable. They wanted to label me violent. They wanted to label me as a criminal. They wanted to label me as a person that lacks integrity. They wanted to label me as a person that lacks stability. They wanted to label me as a paper terrorist. Come on now. So, because they don't want me to defend myself. They don't want me to um, get justice for their criminal acts. So they try to stop me. It's ridiculous. And when I say they wanted to use me as an example, to place fear. They do, this is just a repeated, this is just history repeating itself. This is what they do all the time. This is nothing new. You, you gotta stop thinking they did. This is nothing new. They did this to a lot of our, you know, brothers and sisters. But it can place fear in someone. 
And, um, you know, because they feel like, well, hell, they got the power right now. So, I don't, I'm not ready to deal with that. I'm not ready to fight against that. Because it takes a lot of strength and courage, you know, to stand on your square and uh, be kind of sound in that. You know, not everybody is ready for that. And these people are out here killing people, you know, physically and with, you know, curses and, and spell work. They, they, they taking people out. That's what they're doing. Yes. So they, 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 they place fear in my children. They were being used. But they got to come up about that, honey. You got to come up out of that fear. That fear will kill you, can kill you. Then they had, you know, groups that I was associated with. Also, that jumped on the bandwagon. You know what I'm saying? These bonds that I have, it's up under the blood right ears. Come on. Okay? I have yet to do my recording with my uh, dealings with them. Soon come. Soon come. Soon come. And they try to label me as a fraud, deceitful, <laughs> mentally unstable, huh? All y'all saying the same. So come on now. All y'all saying the same thing? Like as if I don't, I can't, you know, <laughs> connect the dots. Come on now. Come on now. And I didn't have these problems until I started connecting, speaking to a guy in the blood right ass. And when I do my recording, I'll, I'll say, I'm going to say names. I'm going to say the names. But this ain't that time and place right now. Let me get to the closing of this, but before I do, I want to go over these clarifiers. And I wish I had recorded this because as I was shuffling the tarot deck to clarify my aunt, Queen of Sheba, and Mama Jumbo, I was clarifying my aunt first, giving and receiving the number 10, okay? Bringing that order and that divine justice, and this flew out. I turned it over. It was just as I almost passed out. I'm like, oh my goodness. Are you sick? Stop. What? Okay. Justice came out on top of my art. Are you kidding me? My art is the number 10 and justice is the number 11. Stop. Bringing that one, one, one.
Come on now, people. Gosh, I was like mind blown. Okay. So we got justice on top of justice. That's amplified. You see what time it is, baby? Come on now. Yes. Eustia is me. Eustia is me. Eustia is me. And I think I'm saying justice in Latin incorrectly. But, however, spirit knows what I'm talking about. We'll correct that later. And I'm going to say it again. It used to is me ooze. 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 Again. It used to is me ooze. 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 Justice is mine. So now, on Queen, Queen of Sheba, let's get this straight here, let's get this straight here, okay? Let's, let's, let's look at this here clear. Queen of Sheba, what she got for us? How, well, how is she being clarified? Well, she's about, what is she? Um, the goddess of uh, revealing secrets, right? So we got this ten of, ten of Pentacles in reverse, five of Wands, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, what is she revealing? Well, it looked like to me she was revealing some dang gone family conflict, the family secrets, the shit that the family been doing. But you see, I, I, I know because of that divine wisdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. they, done, they done told me. So she she's bringing she's bringing um, or exposing these family secrets, this conflict that they brought, because this wheel is turning, boo boo. Okay, what goes around comes around. Uh huh. You reap what you sow. You may think you're on top today. But that wheel turns constantly, and you'll find yourself on the bottom tomorrow, okay? You will get what you give, all right? This is the karmic wheel here, the wheel of fortune, all right? So the wheel has turned. Yeah. Come on now. All right? Mm-hmm. And then we have Mama Jumbo bringing in them new beginnings. Okay, the fool right here at the zero point, so you can create clearing out all and everything, balancing out things here, so you can create whatever it is you want to create from the new. Okay. Walking away into your new beginnings, baby, because the Six of Wands here is bringing victory. You are victorious in all that you do. You better know it. You do you understand? Mama Jumbo said for you to shine. You are meant to be a star. You are meant to be seen and heard. And that's what that six of wands bring. Yes. You ready in this eight of cups. Okay. You walking away. You're saying to hell with this. Y'all can have it. Okay. Y'all can have it. I have new beginnings to enter, and that I will, gladly, with grace, with love, with gratitude, because I am victorious. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. 
So I'm sending love on this day of Venus. Embrace it, okay? Love freely. Give love freely and receive love constantly. I can't remember where I heard that from, but props to whoever, you know, came up with that there, okay? Yes. And, you know, these recordings that I'm doing, these are going to be passed down to my future heirs. Mm-hmm my posterity so that they can hear grandma, grand, ma, great, great, grand, ma, great, 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 grandma, so on. They can hear me, okay? And I don't know which ones will take on these gifts, but they will have the these as their tools. Okay, they have my ashe on it, and they will be able to hear my voice. Okay, hear me intuitively reading these cards. So I send my love to them as well. Enjoy this day. Make it an amazing day because only you can. Peace.